let's inlay the headstock. Now, the first thing to do, I've got to glue this in place. I'm going to use masking tape and super glue. Um, I've, I've already penciled in where I want it, but uh, of course the masking tape is going to cover that, and so I'm going to have to, I think I'll have to measure so I can reposition it uh, exactly where I where I want it, because the headstock could look quite different with masking tape over the top, but uh, so I'm, I, I made sure I measured um, the perfect position first. But before I do all that, uh, where I've repaired it just here. Um, you, can go, you can go back and uh, watch that video. Um, but uh, there's a little bit of a lump on the back of it where I've repaired it, so it's a bit of a wobble. So I've just got to flatten that, otherwise it's not going to glue down properly. In fact, I'm likely to break it. <laughs> even more likely to break it. Uh, it's worrying me taking this off, um, even though it's super glue and masking tape, um, which is probably the easiest to remove. Um, there's still a danger of me breaking it when I remove it, so we've got to be really careful here. There's a bit of 120 grit um, perspex masking tape and uh, a miniature sanding block. As luck would have it, I can see the pencil mark just there. I can't see the pencil mark here on the dark surface, but uh, I can see it through the light wood. So, uh, result. I'm just marking it with pencil again, just to make it easier to reposition when I've got it glued, or when I'm gluing it in. This makes me realise how tricky it's going to be to scalpel around the edges when this is in situ, but we'll see. Nothing about this inlay is straightforward. I'm going to be very sparing with the glue. In the hope that it will be very easy to get off afterwards. A few little spots. Key places, make sure the main bits are supported. I'll try not to get the glue on my fingers. Brand new 10A scalpel blade and I'm going to really take my time over this, I'm not going to rush. This is probably the most important step, although obviously the routing is fairly important, um, but this is what gives us the accuracy, so I'm, I'm really going to take my time. Very gentle strokes. Much better to take multiple gentle strokes. Actually, maybe I'm not being as gentle as I intended. I was pressing a little bit there. Yeah, it's... I think I'm going to have to keep... Yes, I've already gone off there. But this is what happens if you try to press. No, I'm not happy with this. I think I need a better working position. Yeah, the microphone's in my way. <laughs> Let's reposition this. I realised I must try to keep the scalpel reasonably vertical, otherwise I'm cutting under it. And I'll have problems fitting it. I think the... Uh, I think it's fairly vertical sided. It should be. Mm, let's go straight for the difficult bit. Mm. 
This is so, so fiddly. Quite whether I'm going to get right into the point, I'm not sure. Looks like I'm succeeding actually. Very tricky to keep a smooth profile around that outside edge. And I don't know how much of a success I've got on the inside edge there, the really tight one. This is actually the most difficult bit really, so... Whew. Good one, but a little bit bigger than the previous. Mm -hmm. Removed one layer of masking tape. Masking tape here isn't glued down, so it's all ruching up as I cut through it. Let's remove that. These tight curves are very tricky, but inside curves are easier than outside curves. Up to a point. This should come off cleanly because I should have got every little corner and there shouldn't be any um, any masking tape intact around the edges. Happily that seems to be the case. Oops. Yeah, lovely. Of course there's a little bit there to come off. But, uh, now the tricky bit. I'm going to use a double-edged razor blade, um, so chances of me cutting myself. But I've I've only glued here, here, I think here, no here and here. So I'm hoping that I can just slide this underneath and break the bond. Yes. Well, that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Probably not the safest way of doing this. There we go, it's coming away. Most relieved. 
I was dreading that bit. I just hope all the uh, scalpel marks are clear and defined. They don't look particularly clear around this part, but I can, as long as there's a scratch there that I can see, I can I can deepen the, the cut. It's very difficult to see in places, particularly against the the light background, so I'm just going to go over it with some chalk and hopefully it's going to highlight the lines. Ah yes, that is much better. Unfortunately I've got a couple of double lines in places showed up that my work isn't as neat as it could be, but that should give us enough visibility to be able to route it out. I've got an attempt at dust extraction here, I uh, don't know how successful it will be. Um, laburnum is, is an irritant, I, I, it's, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Um, I'm going to be quite close to this so I don't want to laburnum dust in my eyes, although I think that's going to be inevitable. Laburnum berries, of course, are poisonous. I don't think laburnum dust is, uh, is poisonous as such, but I believe it is an irritant. I've got a 1 16th bit on the router, and I've got a little flag of masking tape. Try and keep this in focus. Um, which just helps blow the, uh, the dust away as I'm routing. On this pass I'm only going to be doing the, those edges where the bit is going to be the far side of the, the edge that you're working on. Um, then I'll have to turn it around. Um, always work towards you, never away from you, um, because you can't see around the back of the bit. So I'll have to turn the work around or, or work the other way for the, for the, uh, for the far edges. Uh, this time I'm just going to be doing the, the, the near edges as best I can. I'm going to switch to a finer bit. I can't get the uh, the sixteenth of an inch bit through uh, through these narrow gaps. So um, one thirty second is uh, the bit I'm going to switch to. Whew, this is tiring. <laughs> Nervous energy. Uh, we'll, we'll get there. But uh, the, the the most dangerous part is when lifting it off the work. I think I'm going to have to make sure I go back to a neutral position. Um, I, I nearly slipped here. I don't. Uh, I think I was working inside the line, but uh, I don't know whether you can see that. But uh, probably not. 
but I, I went over a little bit further than I was intending to. Uh, but I think I, I think I'm okay. Hopefully you can see that the uh, the route a bit now the thirty second of an inch. Uh, what's that? Just under a millimeter. It's uh, it's set to the uh, the thickness of the inlay. Turn the work around so that I'm uh, now again working towards myself. So I'm doing the other edges, and uh, I don't think I'm going to be, be able to have any extraction unless I can maybe I can tape it to the board or something. I don't know. We'll see how how it goes without extraction. I'm very near to a final fit. I've gone very close to the line with the router, um, but I think the final fit I'm going to do with with scalpel, with inlay chisel, although this is looking quite large uh, for the work, and I have a, a tiny, tiny chisel. Um, so we'll see how we get on with the end grain, because of course cutting down with the end grain the fibres don't immediately release. So, um, well, we'll see. Uh, but this could take a while, actually. This, this could be a very fiddly process. <laughs> I'm petrified of slipping here. Trying to be gentle with the scalpel. And as predicted, the, uh, the fibres are still hanging on, and uh, I have to get my a chisel or something to uh, cut the fibres. I think if it wasn't end grain, this would have just released. Actually, I might use the scalpel, just going sideways. There we go. All that for one tiny little piece. Head stop.
better, but we're still nowhere near there. We, we've got a lot to do here. I might not show you everything. <laughs> you will notice a change has come on uh, this piece. Uh, the bit that I reinforced with glue, uh, I broke over here, remember, and I reinforced this with super glue because it was very, very thin and I thought it would break. Well, it's broken anyway. The game now is trying to figure out where the pinch points are to work out which bits I need to work on in order to get it to fit. It is so close to fitting and actually having just the half is quite an advantage because um, it means I've got a better feel for where it's not quite fitting and one of those places appears to be around here so I'm, I'm just going to very very carefully work my scalpel in and see if I it, it's it's a whisker it's it's hardly anything but I, I can't press this in otherwise I'll break it so it, it's got to be a close fit but it mustn't be too tight Yeah, <laughs> this is so thin a fit that uh, it's difficult to get the scalpel in. But I'm just going to press the scalpel in and then hopefully I can see where I've got to trim. This is a little bit crude, but uh, hopefully it will get me to that fit that I need. I've still got to take a little bit off here. I've now got a pretty good fit and it's taken two hours of, of trimming to get to this point. Um, I think the fracture here is, is at an angle because the uh, this bit seems to overlap somewhat. Um, so, well maybe not, I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to take that out and work on this piece independently and hopefully the two bits will match up. But I'm, I'm really pleased with that, it's almost flush to the surface. It took a long time but I got there. So now I've got to do the same with this piece. Yeah, that now fits there but we haven't got to fit <laughs> Anywhere else, really. Yeah, this is very much a, just a, a refinement process, taking very, very little away. But without it, it's not going to fit. It's very important to make sure the bottoms of the cuts are square. Otherwise it won't press in. That's what I found on the other half was that it, it pressed into the top but it wouldn't seat properly and that's because there was material at the, at the, uh, at the bottom of the cut that uh, meant that the whole thing wasn't square and it wouldn't, it wouldn't seat. Oh, that's looking a lot better. Right, that arm now basically fits and it's just a matter of getting the rest of it to uh, to do so. Yeah, <laughs> I've got both bits fitting now but they don't quite go together. I've got that sitting quite nicely on that side and this bit doesn't quite go in. So 
I may regret this, but I'm just going to try to just take a tiny bit off the edge here where the cut isn't quite vertical. Gosh, will that go in? I suppose I could try the alternative way of putting that half in and then seeing if I can fit this bit. I'll do that. And I'm just trying to sand the underside and not the top so that it will slot in. Yes, it's gone in, <laughs> finally. And that should be a fairly invisible mend. I'm quite pleased with that. I'm not going to glue it in right now because I've got a gig to go to. <laughs> and. Um, I, uh, I, I think I'm okay with that. Um, well, I would probably have to do a small amount of filling around the outside, but whether or not I'll just allow the super glue to take up the gaps, I don't know. I'll have a think about that. But uh, I think we'll leave it there for now. Much relieved. <laughs> and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.